So let's do, um, oh, let's just go ahead and start. With, this is a good one. It's yeah. a good graphic here. So this is what, you know, I suggest that everybody does this every night for one year. Go out and draw a circle, a big circle on the ground and put a cross in it and then put a chair out there and, you know, make sure it's a comfortable chair. And then every night go out there and sit there from sun sundown to sun up. And then this is what you'll see. You'll notice here, you've got the solstices, the winter solstice, equinox, the summer solstice. You've got the zenith. Remember, the zenith is defined as the point directly overhead from your vantage point. It's different than the celestial north pole. And it's this axis here that is, is moving because of the processional motion of the Earth's axis. But so what happens is that on the summer solstice, which would be six months um, away from where we're at right now, because the earth is tilted, its northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun, the angle is different. So it creates the longest time that the sun would be above the horizon. So you can see why a day would be longer on some, this is the longest day of the year, and this is the shortest day of the year, right? And this is where we're at now. We're at the shortest day of the year. Notice that they put the that the galaxy is in here, I guess this, or is that, the, I don't know, maybe that's just an artistic effect. Um, and then the equinox, there'll be two equinoxes and they'll be the same. And they're right in the middle of the two. They're right in the middle, you know, between the winter solstice and the summer solstice or, or, or very close to it. And then we go to here, we can see another way of in visualizing it. And here you have the terrestrial equator, which is the red line. And the white line is the plane of the ecliptic. So the white line is the orbital plane of the earth. And the red line is the uh, Earth's equator projected into space. And so it's obvious that you can see from this diagram rotating this way. So from above, if you were up here, see vertical of the ecliptic, if you're looking down, now that motion is clockwise, right? But then the Earth's motion is going to be the opposite of that. But so what's happening here is this, this full circle takes just under 26,000 years. If, uh, if the people listening had seen some of our preliminary podcasts on the great year, we, we did talk about this. So it's going around and the tilt of the Earth's axis is 23 and a half degrees out of vertical from its you know perpendicularity to its orbital plane, see? And the orientation, uh, that, that tilt, we can assume stays relatively constant, although the obliquity of the ecliptic which is one of the Milankovitch elements in the three different elements that combine presumably to affect Earth's climate. The Milankovitch, basically what that does is it, 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 it factors some things together and, and it's too complicated to get into right now, but it, it actually comes up with a shorter period. But when you extract it from, from those those other elements, then you've got that just under 25,000 years. A shorter now, period the, for the entire procession. Is that what you're saying? Like when you factor in the Milankovitch cycles, you get a short, you get shorter than 25,920. Yes, you do. Okay. Yes. So here you go on counterclockwise and the tilt of what I'm getting at is that the tilt of 23 and a half degrees varies somewhat so that sometimes it's a little bit less and sometimes it's a little bit more. That's the obliquity of the ecliptic. But for all practical purposes, for right now, we're 23 and a half degrees out of perpendicular. And when we say perpendicular, that's the Earth's axis to the Earth's orbital plane. So in other words, Earth going around the sun sweeps out a plane, and its tilt um, is 23 and a half degrees out of perpendicular. And so what that means is that relative to like this orange dashed line here, the vertical of the ecliptic, you'd add 23 and a half, 23 and a half, and you get 47 degrees defines this angle right so right now it's this line here that points up as it says direction of the celestial north pole and right now there's a star a prominent star that's very close to that position in the sky polaris and so we use that as one of our guide stars it's you know the the, the north star as it's called or polaris but you can picture that this yellow line is hinged to this red line and that they're attached to one another. So this red line, we're looking basically at a plane, a two-dimensional figure in cross-section. So all we see is the line, but it's in reality, you know, it's a vast plane. 
think think of like a an old fashioned thirty three RPM record album with a dowel stuck through the hole in the middle. So as you rotated the dowel, the record album is going to be moving with it, isn't it? Right. I wish I had brought. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I think you can visualize that. So that red line is the cross section of a disc that is also moving in tandem with the axis of the earth. And so the plane of the earth's orbit remains fixed. The celestial equator moves. And so the intersection point, the line of intersection between those two planes is moving at the same rate. So let's go to this graphic. And here you see the vernal point, sun at the spring equinox, right? And you come across here and you've got Pisces and Aries right there. Um, I mean, sorry, Pisces. Let's see, we're over here. Sun at autumnal equinox, sun at summer. Here we go down here. So win sun at winter solstice. There it is down there. And so here you see the green line is the celestial equator. Here's, here's the earth. Project its equator into space. And that gives us the green line, right? The zodiac is the yellow line or the plane of the earth's ecliptic. So this is the yellow line is the earth's orbit orbital plane the green line is the earth's equator projected into space so you can see here where they intersect right so as as this moves around this cross with a solstitial line and an equal noctial line is moving and it's moving along the celestial equator does that make sense i know it's hard to, that's why we need um some yeah good this, this animations is a, this is a strange graphic because it's trying to show you the overview, but trying to also remain geocentric, which is weird. Um, yeah. Right? We've got four suns in this picture instead of showing multiple positions of the Earth, <laughs> like a heliocentric model. But yeah, I, I see what it's pointing Right. Out. Well, see, what you can see How here is, is that the, the equinox, <laughs> the sun is right there occupying the intersection of the two planes. Whereas like at winter solstice, you'll see there's a 23, actually you're later saying here, 23.44 degrees south, you'd say, you know, celestial latitude south of the equator, celestial equator, just the opposite at summer solstice, it's above it. Yeah. See, because of that tilt and see, that's why we have the seasonal changes. If, if the earth's axis was a vertical to its orbital plane, you wouldn't have seasonal changes like we do now because the, the it's the tilt that causes the seasonal changes. And what you would then have is, you know, the change would be would dependent be upon latitude. Yeah. And you would probably have basically desert at the equator because it's going to be constantly under direct sun. And then you would have constant night darkness at the two poles. And then somewhere in between, you would have presumably some habitable, but I don't know, things would be so different that it's hard to say, but you know, you can do a, a, a quick thought exercise and basically there would be no seasonal change without that tilt. And here's kind of a, a much simpler version of it. Again, the so here you can kind of see with this, here's the earth's equator, this dashed line. If you project that into space, it gives you the celestial equator, right? And so as the Earth's axis is moving, so is its equator. And if it's the Earth's equator, terrestrial equator is moving, then so is its celestial counterpart. And so because it's moving, then it's making this uh, motion along this motion of the intersection points. So the intersection points gives us the equinoxes. And then when you come 90 degrees around, right, or all the way around 270 degrees, then what happens is you've got the maximum difference between these two, right? Does that make sense, sort of? We yeah, another that. way I think of it is the solstices are when the line that you can extend from the axis of the Earth intersects the axis of the sun. Those are solstices. You see what I mean? Say that again. The, the axial line of the earth that you could, you, if you imagine you could extend that out into space, it's got a tilt to it, right? Yeah, yeah. And there's an axial line you could draw for the sun, which is basically straight up and down for the solar yeah, system. Okay, yeah. And the axis line of the earth intersects the axis line of the sun. That's a solstice. And okay. 90 degrees from that in either direction are the equinoxes. 
Is that not? Yeah. Is that weird? <laughs> that's how I think I'm of it. I'm trying to <laughs> envision what you're saying. Um, but I, I understand what you're saying. You, it's like, to me, you're looking at it like, uh, like from a geometry standpoint, you're, you're watching, you're, in your mind, you've got the geometry of these two planes in motion. You're seeing the correlation between the intersecting lines of the two planes being your, uh, your equinoxes. It's kind of the same thing with the axial. Yeah, line. because at, on, the, on the summer solstice for the northern hemisphere, the tilt of the earth is pointing basically directly at the sun, which would make the axial line of the sun intersect the axis of the sun. I mean, I'm sorry, the axis of the earth intersect the axial line of the sun. They would make an angle way above the solar system. Somewhere. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, yeah, I see yeah. now what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. When you put it that way. Right. That's probably a better way to say it. But yes, the solstices are when those axis lines intersect somewhere in space. And the equinoxes <laughs> are when the, the, the equatorial and ecliptical plane intersect yeah that's right so it's like you have that that's a that's an interesting so that's cool yeah well it, it's challenging but you know it's it's worth i think it's worth trying to understand i agree we've spent <laughs> well yeah stresses well, the need our, to get out and and watch and you know see, the, see the changes in the motions and i'm certainly guilty of, of not doing enough of that as much as i love it i'm still questioning the motions and yeah i don't see it often enough i'm i got lost in my own thought exercise there not to throw you too far off, but seeing for the last month or more, right? You got Jupiter and Venus and Saturn that have been visible, you know, in a in a line. Yeah. So yep. you can you can like see the arc of yep. the you know the plane of the ecliptic, right? That's yeah. right. So does does that move though with the seasons, or does that stay constant? It moves uh, north and south. Yeah. That line, like if you're looking to the south, yeah. it's like that line goes up. Or down, depending on what time of year it is. It, it uh, will oscillate right. up and down by basically 47 degrees. The 47 degrees. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I, I was almost getting there. You guys got me there. All right. So let's look at some examples.